welcome back to Eco Solutions. It's perhaps fitting that on this grey and cloudy day here in Sydney, we're talking about a story you may find surprising. Despite its reputation for clean air and beautiful beaches, Australia actually has the dubious distinction of being the world's worst per capita greenhouse gas polluter. Last year, a study by the American think tank, the Centre for Global Development, found that Australia produces about 10 tonnes of carbon dioxide for every man, woman and child every year. Now that compares with 8 tonnes for the US and just 1.8 tonnes for China. The reason, says the report, is a combination of high energy demand coupled with coal-fired power stations that are among the most inefficient in the world. It makes for uncomfortable reading, especially since it's Australia that many say is now experiencing the first effects of climate change. So there's a lot of hope riding on a new project underway here. It's called carbon capture and it involves extracting CO2 gases, greenhouse gases, out of inefficient power stations and injecting them deep underground. This is how it works. It's one of the world's largest underground carbon storage projects. It's just opened in the southern state of Victoria and it will test whether storing carbon dioxide underground is a viable way to stop these emissions produced from power plants from going into the atmosphere. During the two-year test, carbon dioxide will be compressed and transported to a site where it will be injected underground. This attempt, supported in part by the Australian government, will test the concept. The key is to see whether these underground wells are able to securely capture the carbon for long-term storage. Researchers hope that the rock could also absorb some of the carbon dioxide. By locking these emissions underground, researchers hope this will dramatically cut the impact of coal-powered plants on the environment. More than 100,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide will be injected during the course of the trial and researchers say there'll be constant and extensive monitoring. Some environmental groups, however, are critical of carbon capture technologies. They say they're expensive and are only a stop-gap measure that may encourage continued reliance on fossil fuels. But that's not the only form of carbon capture. Another technology is aimed at solving the same problem this time finding its inspiration from the past. The next time you take out the trash, you may want to take a moment to think. Are you throwing out a potential power source? Some believe that organic waste is the fuel of the future. Organic waste is essentially anything that was once living, so that includes everything from waste paper to leftover food. This waste contains carbon, which means that when it goes to the landfill, it will break down and produce greenhouse gases, which many scientists say contribute to climate change. But here in Australia, work is underway on a process that's able to use our organic waste and produce energy, and at the same time address not one, but several other environmental problems. The process is called pyrolysis. It breaks down the organic waste to produce a synthetic gas, which can then be used to generate electricity. This technology is so good because it's such a holistic approach. We actually address all of the needs of society by improving the sustainability of food production uh, as well as energy production. And what's left over from the process is a fine black substance known as biochar. Scientists say biochar basically locks the carbon from the organic waste into a solid state. That prevents it from breaking down into a gas and going into the atmosphere, as it would in a landfill. And the benefits don't end there. Researchers also believe it could solve yet another environmental problem. This sugarcane field is actually producing greenhouse gases. Gases like methane and nitrous oxide, which are in fact naturally produced on farms by the microorganisms living in the soil. And in these wet conditions, they produce even more gas. Biochar has been added to this sugarcane field as part of a 10-year trial to see whether it could make a difference. We know that the biochar in soil uh, has got strong potential to decrease emissions of nitrous oxide and methane from the soil. So these two very potent greenhouse gases can be reduced. Soil scientist Lucas Van Zwieten first took notice of biochar more than a year ago. He's been studying the link between greenhouse gases and crop farming 
for 15 years. He says as well as cutting emissions from farms, biochar also helps the crops grow. Lifelong farmer Robert Quirk thinks the benefits are clear. It's going to be a major win-win for both the growing side and the environment. And once again, it will probably be able to link uh, environmental work to increased productivity, therefore increased uh, profitability. And beyond the farm, biochar technology could have repercussions on the bigger picture. We all know that uh, the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are increasing, levels of nitrous oxide are increasing, and we're trying to find ways to, uh, to, to reduce those levels in the atmosphere. We all know the potential for the uh, potentially catastrophic events that might occur if we reach threshold levels. Uh, we believe that uh, pyrolysis and the use of biochar uh, are going to be a very useful way to actually mitigate or reverse climate change. Cutting emissions, providing energy. Some scientists say this technology is promising. What remains to be seen, however, is how this technology could apply as a real-world solution and whether it could make a real difference in the fight against climate change.